So what's up everybody and welcome to your next SML 2.0 tutorial and this tutorial we're going to be learning the last of the events and this is going to be the joystick event. Uh, a joystick event could be a legitimate joystick, a gamepad, a PS3, Xbox 360 controller acting as a gamepad, but uh, anything like that. The problem, some the reason why I kind of dislike teaching this tutorial is that uh, you might get different results from me depending on your gamepad drivers, right? And it depends how your drivers configure your gamepad or your controller, your joystick. So you might not get the same results, but I will be showing you uh, how to see which results you're getting. And if you want, you can ask the user, say say you don't know what event uh, triggers what, you can ask the user at the beginning of the game that if they want to use a joystick that they can configure their joystick in the game. So you ask them which button they want to use to move right, which button they want to move to move left, so on and so forth. And so you can, you can do uh, uh, various things like so. So anyway, let's take a look at the first uh, joystick event. And that is SF event joy uh, joystick connected. And if it is connected, then we're gonna say we're, we want to know what number it is. So we're gonna say joystick. We're gonna make an event, and the corresponding uh, <laughs> the corresponding uh, instance or whatever for it is called joystick connect. Now we see a sim we see a similarity with say the mouse and um, with the joystick. So uh, for the corresponding uh, event type, we always have something else that corresponds with it. And this case is called joystick connect. And most times they're well, yeah, they're if not always, most times have similar names. So now we're gonna get the joystick ID, and I'm just gonna put plus one there. And uh, I'm just gonna say is connected, and we're gonna do std and l and add a break. The reason why I put the reason why I put plus one there is that the joystick IDs act like arrays. So if our joystick number one is inputted, then it's gonna say our joystick ID is zero, right? And I think uh, the designer of SFML did that for a good reason. Let's say we have two players, right? And we have uh, the player positions. Uh, let, let's say we have them in, uh, like we have an array of, of vectors or something like that that stores a position. Or, or let's just say we have two arrays like this, right? Uh, with with SML, we'll use SF vectors. But let's just say we have something like this, just to make it common for everybody. So let's say the first index represents the player number. The second one represents uh, X and Y. So for an example, position 0, 0 will represent the first player's X position and 0, 1 will represent the first player's Y position and uh, vice versa. So this would represent the second player's X position and the second player's Y position. So using this, if we want to check uh, if something is connected or say we want to when we actually get into joystick movement we could say position we can get the joystick ID right we can get the joy ID and then we can increase it or uh, we can increase the X coordinate by so on and so forth so I think that's kind of why uh, the creator of, of SML did that so anyways, uh, we're just gonna increase it by one, so we'll say joystick one is connected rather than joystick zero, okay? And uh, so we're gonna add SF event joystick disconnected. And uh, both of them use, both of these use joystick connect, right? So for disconnected and connected, they both use uh, this uh, they both use joystick connect so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this program now my controller is disconnected right now and I'm using my ps3 controller and I'm using motion enjoy in order uh, to make it act as a gamepad so notice it doesn't say that it is disconnected 
this only checks for events while it, at runtime. It doesn't check to see if any gamepad is disconnected uh, before runtime. It doesn't do that. So now I'm going to plug in my controller. And as we can see, it says joystick one is connected. Now, if I unplug it, it says joystick one is disconnected. So we can use that to find out, say you want to do a two player game or something and uh, you require both people to, to have uh, game pads or something, you could do a check to see if both game pads are connected, and if they are, then you could do something with it, okay? So, uh, that's it for that. So now, we, we're going to check for uh, joystick button presses. So, uh, we have button pressed and button released. So, uh, we're gonna just do uh, button pressed so what we're gonna do is uh, let's see we're just gonna say button and we're gonna say uh, joystick button and we can see the ID of the uh, which controller which gamepad or which whatever whichever one click the button and you can find out the corresponding button in this case I'm only using one uh, gamepad so we already know which one is pressing it but if you wanna know which gamepad is pressing which one then you can do that so uh, now we're just gonna test this out so I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna connect this so it says jo joystick one is connected and I'm gonna press a few buttons so uh, it tells me which button number uh, I'm indeed pressing. Okay, so with diff with various game pads and so on and so forth, these buttons might have different values. For example, I configure in my game pad that when I press the X key, that it would uh, specify that. But maybe on another joypad, when they press the X key, uh, the button might be five or maybe six. So what I could do is that at the beginning of the game or in the options menu if I say that for example if I wanted to uh, con want them to configure right so say I have like an action a button for attack let's just say attack and I'll set it equal to zero in the configuration menu I could say okay press a button to change the attack when they press the button when they press a button then I can set attack equal to that button they pressed so now they configure their controller to best fit their needs so depending on their controller layout and so on and so forth you can um, set it like that also you can with distribution uh, have a, a set controller layout that they can uh, set their gamepad to but if you let them personally configure it then they can configure it to their needs right so it's up to them uh, uh, how they how they want to handle it okay so uh let's look into uh the the final uh uh event of of joysticks and this is the joystick moved event so if they moved the joystick so if they moved uh the joystick then we can do a bunch of things we can spit out what axis they moved at or we can say we can specify a certain axis so we can say that if event uh, dot uh, joy move joystick move dot axis is equal to SF joystick and we can specify a certain axis so whether it's POV X POV Y R U V X Y and Z right uh, so we can uh, specify which axis we wanna um, we wanna do it by, and depending on which joystick you are you're using, it could yield different results. But let's just say uh, if it is axis X or something, then we are going to uh, spit to the screen. We're gonna say uh, the position. And we're gonna get that by saying event dot joy move dot position and we're going to get uh, uh, what is the next one there's position and there is 
we're gonna get the we can get the joystick ID if we want well we don't need that and we're already specifying which axis we need so actually in this scenario we just need to put the position and that's it so when we run this program uh so now when I when I move across the X axis or something like that and this is the results that we get so when I press the left button, I get negative 100. When I let go, I get negative a negative zero number. When I press the right D-pad button, this is what I get, okay? And uh, you can do this for a bunch of different things. You can do it for the, uh, the POV. You could do it for a bunch of different things, but it really depends on your joy, your, your gamepad or your joystick. So you're gonna have to configure it for your needs. But that is it for this tutorial. I hope you really enjoyed it. Working with gamepads is fun, but uh, it can be, it's very rewarding in the end, but it can be a bit rigorous um, to begin with. But I hope you really enjoyed this. That's it for events, and we'll get into some fun stuff. We're gonna get into some, gr some st graphics to the screen in the next tutorial. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and